Well, joining us for more on that and the bond market uh, movement, Simon Michelle from Fig Securities. Good morning, Simon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've certainly seen no last-minute deal as markets were potentially hoping for. Greece now officially missing that payment to the IMF. Suggestions are, though, that the bigger concern is the contagion on markets, not the fact that it's now missed this payment. Yeah, good morning, Leanne, and that's certainly what we've been looking at, uh, just how the uh, markets have been behaving as we uh, drift past that uh, timing for that payment to the IMF. Uh, and we're not seeing a huge reaction. Um, obviously, we're not seeing any trading in Greek bonds. That would be expected. Uh, most of those exchanges closed. Um, European periphery nations are faring pretty well as well, and uh, if you have a look at global yields, up a few basis points. So I think we've seen the worst of it uh, at the beginning of the week where we saw a massive adjustment in interest rates uh, globally in uh, preparation after the weekend uh, deliberations didn't lead to any solution. Uh, I think now we could uh, just see it fairly steady into that referendum on Sunday, Leanne. Mm, it certainly is interesting that those yields are up and, and markets do seem to be relatively calm given all of this Greek saga continuing. Do you think that's a, a result of the fact that it's all now being priced in, a lot of this uncertainty and the news? Look, I think you're absolutely right there. You know, I, I think the market was well aware of this uh, pretty much for the entire month of June. We were heading to this uh, date of uh, the 30th for that payment. Uh, you know, as we uh, saw most of the uh, deliberations, negotiations exhausted, I think the market sort of accepted that, uh, you know, we were likely to lead in. Then we saw the Greek uh, uh, referendum called at, uh, over the weekend. So I think, uh, you know, people sort of drew a line in the sand that uh, until we get past that point, not likely to see any movement. Uh, obviously, if we, we do uh, see any positive outcomes of those negotiations uh, later this week, that would be a, a positive. And I think you'd see some market reaction on that but I think uh, as long as uh, there's no sort of further deterioration people will be waiting for that referendum on Sunday. Certainly will be. Um, on those US markets we did see a strong performance in, in equities. Um, some saying that you know the focus is now on other catalysts such as the Fed's next move. We have those non-farm payroll um, numbers due out this week. Um, we have seen an increase in volatility though. Why do you think this is? What, what can this be put down to? Do you think it's in the lead up to, to the US Fed move? Look, I think so, yes. I think it's people just uh, repositioning their portfolios uh, around the expectation of when that Fed move's going to be. Uh, you know, we've seen some pretty big movements in uh, yields uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, the US 30-year, for example, has been trading in a range of about 2.22 to 3.24. So that's about a 1% range. That's quite a bit of volatility. And uh, the uh, yield curve has really ended the first half of this year at quite a high. So we're starting to see those longer yields drift up substantially. If you have a look at our Aussie 10 year, a uh, range of about 90 basis points, and that's ending up at uh, close to year highs as well. So we are seeing that longer than the yield curve now reflecting a view of higher rates emerging. Uh, but I think it's still down to timing of when we're going to see that Fed move. And, uh, you know, with moves by China to lower their rates still, uh, the quantitative easing still coming through the European ECB program. Uh, you know, I think it could be tougher uh, on the US to get that move in 2015. Uh, it's possible we could see that drift into next year. Simon, you mentioned there um, the move out of high yield. What is this doing to those credit spreads? Yeah, that's interesting. We've seen a bit of a widening in the credit spreads. Uh, the Australian ITRAX, which is our credit uh, index, is up to 99 uh, basis points. Uh, that's been hovering around, I suppose, 80 uh, recently. So that does reflect a bit of a move. And I think what you're seeing is people are just uh, uh, de-risking, I suppose, their, their fixed income. So they're moving out of some of that high yield, seeking the safety of, of more government or more... Uh, uh, lower risk bonds, um, taking some profit I think as well and that's seen a little bit of widening in those spreads. Some of that would be coming through obviously Europe as well as uh, we've seen a little bit of a uh, little bit more widening in, uh, in credit spreads over there as well. So that's interesting that uh, you know as we have seen more volatility come through we're seeing that reflecting in, uh, reflected in a widening of risk spreads as well. Fantastic Simon we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Morning Leanne.